Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Ghost Stories in Folklore. In light of our upcoming celebration of the Roman priest and Christian Saint Valentine, I thought I would share with you eight tales of ghostly lovers and spooky soulmates. This first one, my friend, is at the Longfellow's Wayside Inn. Joshua Howe is said to still haunt the Massachusetts Inn that she lived and worked in. She fell in love with a British man who promised to return to America to marry her. But she died a single woman. She had patiently waited for 44 years. But now she enjoys teasing the guests of the inn while she continues to wait for her long lost love. This next one is at the Henderson State University. A young boy from what was once a Methodist college fell in love with a girl from a nearby Baptist university. Friends convinced the boy to stop seeing the girl he loved because of their differences in religion. And he asked someone else to the homecoming dance. When his love found out he was taking someone else, she was so distraught that she ended her life. Students now call her the Black Lady, and every year during homecoming, she wanders the halls of the women's dorms at Henderson State University, looking for the girl who stole her love from her. Next, we have the Santa Clara House. A young married woman had an affair with a traveling salesman from San Francisco. When she found out she was pregnant with child, she took her life up in the attic. The former Victoria home is now a restaurant and customers have seen her wandering the upstairs ladies bathroom and staring out the upstairs window, just waiting for her love to come back to her. This next one is at the Chatham Manor. The lady in white is said to wander along a path leading to the Rappahannock River, searching for her soulmate. Her father, an Englishman, brought her to Chatham House in a desperate attempt to destroy her romance with a commoner. Her lover followed her to America and the two planned to run away together. Their plans were discovered, the boy arrested, and the girl quickly taken back to England. The girl vowed to return to Chatham Manor to find the boy she loved. She was first seen wandering the path on June 21st, 1790, the day she passed away and is rumored to return every seven years on the anniversary of her death. This 
This now leads us to Emily's Bridge. Legend has it that a girl named Emily was in love with a boy her parents did not approve of. They arranged to meet at the Goldbrook Bridge to run away together. When he didn't show up, she took a rope that she had used to tie together her sack of belongings and took her life. People have reported hearing banging, footsteps, a girl screaming, and ropes tightening. This next one is located at the Casablanca Inn. A widowed innkeeper fell in love with a rum runner during Prohibition who made his living smuggling alcohol to the U.S. on his boat. The innkeeper would keep watch on her roof, signaling with a lantern if it was not safe to come home from sea. On a stormy night, she saw federal agents patrolling and waved her lantern to warn her lover. She never saw him again. People still report to this day seeing a woman standing on the roof, waving a light back and forth. This next tale is about the Don Cesar Hotel. Thomas Rohr was studying in Europe when he fell in love with a woman named Lucinda. Lucinda's parents didn't approve of their relationship and forbid them to see each other. Rohr eventually returned to America and one day received a letter from Lucinda. On her deathbed, she had written, Time is infinite. I wait for you by our fountain, to share our timeless love, our destiny is time. When Roe built the Don Cesar Hotel, he included a replica of their fountain. To this day, the lovers have been spotted holding hands and strolling by on many occasions. Our final story, my friends, is that of the 790 Inn in Restaurant. A servant girl named Anna fell in love with a sailor while working at the inn. When he left, she couldn't stand the sight of his ship disappearing down the Savannah River and threw herself into the brick courtyard. Guests have spotted the broken-hearted Anna rocking in chairs, opening windows, and walking up and down the stairs, waiting for her sailor to return. Is it possible that the feelings and emotions of love can trap our souls on this earth in search of our soulmates if we become separated? Do you believe that it is possible that we can become attracted to another person so much that we do not care what happens to us in the afterlife? How strong are your feelings for your significant other? Let us know your opinions in the comments section below. like this episode of ghost stories and folklore be sure to hit the like button and if you would like more videos from panity videos in the future make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell for notifications if you dare <laughs>